intelligencesquared.com. Now, the ushers are going to come round with ballot boxes. And so this is the moment when you have to decide. You have to take your voting slips out and tear them in half and decide whether you're for or against and put the whole thing in if you really can't make your mind up. But we definitely don't want the don't knows to win. OK, as you're doing that, in silence. Yes. Now, in silence, don't discuss with your neighbor how you're going to vote. Your vote, as they always say in Zimbabwe, my vote is my secret. Um, our panelists are going to briefly sum up in three minutes. And we're going to go in reverse order, and they're going to stay sitting where they are. So, Stephen, starting now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been an impassioned debate, and I've certainly enjoyed it uh, myself. Listen, there are certain ironies as well as tragedies, as well as great benefits in the whole African equation. And I don't think it's very, very helpful to lumber any one country or any one group of countries with either all the blame or all the benefit in terms of what's happened. In the end, George is completely correct. Africa is going to have to do it for itself. But having said that, Africa can do it for itself on the basis of its own choices. What upsets me is that we seem to be dictating to them whether or not they're making wise choices in dealing with the Chinese or dealing with the Russians or dealing with the Indians. There are lots of elephants in this room. It's not just the Chinese. Part of growing up is learning how to negotiate, learning from your mistakes, and not being patronized. And I think with that kind of open mind, we should trust Africa to go ahead in terms of its relations with anybody. Thank you. Anna, can you sum up for your side? Well, I come from the left, and uh, although I'm sitting here at the right, I'm from the left, and I am from the left who fought the colonialism, who fought colonialism in my own country, was a colonial power. So uh, my left is the left of human rights, the left of democracy, the left of the rule of law. That is essential for sustainable development. So I do not accept to, and I do not condone any practices be the, by, by, by Europeans, Americans, Chinese, or Africans that are actually violating essential universal principles. I do not offer apologies for the colonial behavior and uh, unfair behavior, even in terms of uh, not uh, uh, living up to the commitments in terms of development assistance by the Europeans and the Americans, all the mistakes done in Sudan, in Somalia, in Ethiopia, el every, in many other places. Uh, today, uh, actually, we are in uh, the day before um, a very important meeting started in, in, in Busan, in, in Korea, to gathering everybody, including China, including African uh, governments, to try to find out common criteria in terms of making development aid work and be measurable and be transparent. And I think this is what we need. And uh, the one other element is to make understand that when we deal with China and Africa, we're not just dealing with governments, we're dealing with societies, with people. D addressing the needs of people is the crucial question. Empowering them is the crucial question. The women, the youth, they are the ones who are making the, the Arab Spring war, showing all these hopes. And I agree with what was said by George that indeed at some point in China as well, we are already watching that. See how Ai Weiwei and the other people came out defying, challenging the, the, the regime in China. So I believe that uh, uh, we need to make China understand that it's in its long-term strategic interest to indeed come to these criteria that will indeed enable some development uh, out of uh, its practices in Africa and elsewhere. And we need to do it uh, as, uh, at home as well, because the scramble for Africa we've been talking about in the last years, it's now turning the scramble for Europe. Everything is cheap available to Chinese sovereign funds, very opaque. We need absolutely, we Europeans as well, together with Africans and the Chinese, to call for transparency, accountability, scrutiny, closure or uh, control of these offshores, these tax havens who are the, uh, the, the holes where the so much wealth from Africa and from Europe are uh, diverted from our uh, well-being. Thank you very much. Deborah. 
aid did not develop China. And aid is not going to develop Africa. Africa is going to make its own way out of the basis of its own productive activities. It's going to have to figure out how to get its own revenues so it can make its own decisions, yet so the countries there can make their own decisions uh, about what they want to do with their people. And the Chinese are offering a better opportunity, frankly, than most countries in the West are right now for that to happen. They're going into productive activities. They're building up infrastructure. They're enabling African governments to finally get the revenues that they can uh, use to make their own decisions instead of relying on aid. And China's listening better than we are. When Africans say that they want university scholarships, the Chinese are providing that. When they say they want to build universities, the Chinese are building them. When they say they want infrastructure, the Chinese say, okay, we're there. Uh, productive activities, this is what they're doing. They're investing, they're going into manufacturing. And finally, China is changing very rapidly. If your ideas about what China's doing in Africa date from 2006 or 2007, they're already out of date. Look at the environment. Look at the environmental impact assessments that they're doing for their projects. Look at the ISO 9000 uh, standards that they're hoping to achieve in these um, overseas special economic zones. Things are not the same. It's not the same China that we saw five years ago. And George. Um. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this wonderful opportunity to debate this topic. And, um, and uh, you know, I come from a different perspective, and that perspective is I, I want to see Ubuntu institutes built in Africa, not Confucius institutes, okay? And uh, also I'd like to make a certain fact plain, and that is, see, Western companies wouldn't get away with what the Chinese companies are doing in Africa. You know, I mean... Uh, if it had been Western companies uh, doing business in Sudan or even in Angola or with the Queensway Institute, for example, there will have been a whole lot of, you know, uh, uh, noise about this and there will have been campaign against these Western companies. But you can't do that with Chinese companies because they are government controlled or government, government owned. But in a way, I don't put too much blame on the Chinese companies. I blame the blame, I put the blame on our leaders, okay? The leadership simply has simply uh, sort of failed the African people. Uh, many of them are corrupt. Many of them uh, have no accountability. They are people, they are not elected. And look, there is a saying, and that saying is nobody can exploit you without your own consent. And if China is getting away with murder in Africa, it's because our leaders have uh, sort of uh, made it possible for them to do so. And that's why we're going to change uh, many of the leaders in Africa. And I wrote a book about this, and that is Defeating ha! Dictator. Now you get the promotion for the book. I knew he'd slip that in. I knew that would happen. The ushers are at the moment feverishly counting your votes. And so in that moment, I shall abuse my position in the chair to ask the questions I want to ask. And I, George, I want to ask you, what on earth is wrong with the Confucius Institute? It's great if people learn Chinese. <laughs> Everybody should learn Chinese. You, you have to accept well, that China is this growing power. Surely that has Confu to be a good thing. Confucius is as African as Marx and Lenin. Yes, but we have Confucius Institutes here. We should all be learning Chinese, shouldn't we? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yes. yes. Look, we build, you know, uh, the statues of Marx and Lenin. Okay, in Ethiopia, in Cotonou, in Benin, for example. And I mean, look, uh, it, this is not something that you should impose upon Africa. One of the reasons why things went so wrong is because, you know, we were forced to imbibe all these foreign ideas which we didn't understand. Okay. Um, and one thing I wanted to ask on this side is this, the infrastructure question, which we, we've mentioned a lot. Is one of the reasons why China is building so much infrastructure is because it doesn't have the bad experience that European countries have had in building infrastructure in Africa, which is basically that it is not maintained. And is the Chinese development that we're seeing, is it, has it got maintenance contracts built into it? Will it last? The Chinese would like to do maintenance contracts. And in fact, in Ethiopia, they're building a toll road um, in which a Chinese company will run the toll road until they've repaid the loan to build the road. So in that sense, they're, they're willing to step up to the plate uh, and do the maintenance if African governments aren't willing to do it. Um, but they're doing infrastructure for two reasons. One is simply pecuniary. They have construction companies that are already there. They're bidding on these contracts, and 89% of the contracts they're getting are through bidding. 
Um, and they're making a lot of money from that. But the other is because they believe that if you want to rise out of poverty, you first build a road. That's a, a common saying in China, Ya Shang Fu, Xian Shou Lu. And so that's how they look at Africa. Boy, a lot of roads need to be built here. Okay, I can see somebody is hovering on the edge of the stage with the vote. So here we are. I feel like I'm sort of doing the Eurovision Song Contest or something. Aha. Uh -huh. So before the debate, 154 were for the motion. Now that's gone down, 149 are for the motion. Against the motion before, 106. Now, 212. And only 25 people are undecided. So, the motion has gone against. There has been a change around. More of you are convinced by the argument and no longer believe that you have to beware the dragon. But as Anna said, the dragon's coming here anyway. Yes. Thank you very much indeed for joining us tonight.